All right, so we finally got underneath the Expedition Clean note. And we can show you some stuff we did. Um, a lot of welding, a lot of stuff. So we're going to make our way over here. And crawl under and cuss our rotten concrete floor. And here we are. Okay, so we're underneath the truck right now. And we're getting set up on the midsection of the frame rail. This is the Achilles heel of 97 to 2000 F-150 and Expeditions. So, where I'm at now, if you look up there, that's your cross member for your uh, transfer case. And if you look, I mean, you probably can't see. Here, you can see welds. And you can see flat steel welded in. That's me. That's what I did with a stick welder. And I honestly just used a 6011. That's what I had. And this, like these frame rails, were pretty thin, pretty rusty. So um, you could run over top of the weld with a 7014. And why 7014s? Say later in a minute. But, the center section of this frame was rotted out because Ford can't seem to do anything right. Um, we'll get into that. But yeah, welded in, chassis savored black, um, whatever. It looks good now, but the minute it hits the road, it's probably going to be another story. So we climb out of here and we cuss our concrete floor again. And cramp for space we turn around we got here's inside the wheel well here so what we did um, we changed the springs we're gonna be doing um, some towing with this thing and might get serious with towing from time to time and I don't want to attract no heat so the other thing is is my wife's truck and she had said how she'd like this to handle handle better more sports car or turn better so we got I put cargo springs in it which are a little heavier duty than stock and in case she still squats Firestone ride ride, I think ride right airbags doesn't matter airbags um, just the ones you fill up like a valve stem on a car anyway so that's that we've got the same Rancho adjustable nine-way adjustable shocks uh, there if you look at the top that's a hose clamp holding it on because only a dummy would use a zip tie it's gonna break uh, and that's that so same thing sandblasted wheel wells sandblasted frame rails chassis savered black yada yada rear end of this truck was straightforward everything fit no surprises now, the rust on these trucks. Here we go. So, I'm going to get down again in a unique yoga pose so we get the angle right. So, here, see here. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Now, all the way up there, you see that weird trapezoid looking shape, and you can see a weld in there, and a weld up top, and a weld there. Okay, so we put, and I'll explain later because it's cramped and it's hard to kind of explain the amount of strife we went through but right here in this area kills every Ford truck now I'm learned that these mod motors can run out for a good amount of miles like they're really 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 good and Ford makes a really good transmission superior to Chevy and Chevy people will say whatever but facts are facts what kills these trucks and sends them to the scrapyard are these frames. They're junk. They're shit. Ford, can you ever get anything just right? Like, yeah. Anyway. So, what we did. Look under here. Okay, underneath there. Take a look in the center. You'll see a weld seam. Running all the way. Okay, why is that? We're going to come back to that. It's... I'll come back to it. Anyway, after I went through all of this work, I found out Dorman just started to make 
So even if I wanted to get it at the time I was doing it, they hadn't made it yet, makes a... Uh, if you look it up on YouTube, there's a video by Dorman. They show, uh, they have like a patch panel. So right here, you know, that section I replaced from here, all the way along, up to, where's my finger? Probably here, here-ish, right? They have a, a piece that slides up over top and you just slap weld it on. Anyway, thank you Dorman for coming up with it. Just too late. Anyway, if we keep looking around this corner, where's the finger? Right there. I'm trying to run a light and a finger at the same time here. So here, we welded all the way to pretty much see, where's the finger? The finger? Okay, we come up. The bottom was rotted out here. So we welded flat piece in here that joins up here and runs up here and weld it across and we did this on both sides so lots of fun chassis saver block same thing done um, but that kills these trucks that's why they all go to the scrapyard now what I did is I went to the store, I drew me a nice little picture here to explain because it's been a while and it was it didn't work out the way I intended. So what I was originally going to do was this. Rectangular tubing, cut here, cut here, take that piece out, shove it up into the frame and weld it. Um, rectangular tubing, the inner diameter was not the same. It was close, but I couldn't get it exact. I thought I had it close enough where I could, you know, heat and tweak and shove it up in there. Not so much. So I scratched my head for a while. And what I did was I cut. I did originally what I thought I wanted to do was cut here, cut here. But then, to make it wider, when I run a tape measure here, here, and I factored in the radius it would make it wider so what I did was I cut it here and then I took this corner and I turned it so that that radius and that cut comes in here and it joins up with the other side now when you add the radius that adds just enough width where this came out bang on perfect but it meant I had to run that weld seam down the center. So I put two passes in there. So she's got lots of weld. She's strong. And the radius has helped kind of make it more firmy, I suppose. But it worked. Um, the other thing I did, so say this is your frame rail. Outside, inside, inside the frame rail, there was, it was raw, the, the steel was really thin and shitty. So I added... With this piece that I cut out, I used that to beef this up. So I, you know, welded another piece about that high in there. Now, like I said, Dorman offers you this kit. Look it up on YouTube. It's not that bad. Um, but that is what kills these trucks. It's not, well, it's that and flying spark plugs. So that brings us to the story of... There's the motor. We're just going to tear into this in the morning. Um, and the story is, this all started with a spark plug job with someone local. And while I'm telling the story, I'm going to think of whether I should mention this dude's name or not. Because it still pisses me off to this day. And I'm literally choking back, punching him in the face every day that I wake up and look at this truck. So, um... Truck needed spark plugs. Um, not these trucks have a problem with the heads. The the material that supports the spark plug or spark plugs thread into, it's not thick enough. Some stupid engineer forgot what the hell he was doing, I guess, and or didn't give a shit. That's pretty common these days. For whatever reason, the material was too thin, and there's not enough threads to support the spark plugs. So when you go to undo the spark plugs, especially with it being steel and aluminum, 
you run the risk of pulling the threads out and torquing them is they have a whole procedure for it so I'm not quick to trust so I planned on doing this over a long weekend and I had this whole procedure worked out where I'm dumping oil in it for a week before I even think about doing this or two weeks and then yada yada I had this whole thing worked out and I thought hell no because if it goes south I don't have time certs I don't like the threads that are supposed to be pressed in there's a whole special tool Ford approved way to do it I don't have that and I'm if it goes south then I got to tow it somewhere where they do and that's added cost and this is probably not a game I'm gonna win so there's a guy local who works on vintage cars you know like shiny nice versions of this um, drag cars really high-end stuff also claim to be a mod motor expert so I mean what's not to trust there right um, take him the truck and he's done in under four hours so alarm bells are going off in my head he says your truck's done and I went oh you sure yeah no it went well Oh, okay. Right. So, whatever. Alarms are going off in my head, but I'm kind of a nut as it is and well known for being crazy, so I ignore it. And, I don't know, a couple weeks later, I get a phone call. My wife's saying the engine's wrecked. It's making a noise and it's, it's, it's shaking and whatever. I hear it running. Pop, 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 pop. It sounds terrible, right? Spark plug flew out. So great. Call the guy. Guy gets upset. Well, it's not my fault. You set me up and look on Google and Google these trucks and you know the problem and you knew the problem and you just you just threw it on me. No. I knew the problem and I gave it to an expert and you're a dickhead. So he begrudgingly fixes it. And we pay him, like, half or whatever. You know, like, I mean, he eats half, we eat half. But if you ask him, he, you know, he's doing the Lord's work and we're thieving Satanists or some shit. So anyway, yeah, this guy sucks. Truck runs, hooray. Um, same thing. I, two, three weeks later, pop, 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 same story. Another spark plug comes flying out. Phone him again. Well, you get the hell out of here. You never fucking call me again. Bam. Right? Poor guy. I feel bad. Um, so, motor comes out. I do it myself. Now, I pull the heads. He jammed a helicoil in it. He'd had a problem before. Three of the spark plugs had helicoils in them. Okay. So probably the first time that he did the spark plug job, he had a problem. And instead of being a grown-up, picking up the phone, calling the customer, and saying, Hey, shit went south. He said nothing. Jammed a helicoil in it and stuck it up our pooper. So, great. Awesome. Heads are screwed. Heads are screwed because at this point, by the time you helicoil them, You've destroyed the material that's necessary to put a thread and time cert in. Rad. Awesome. So where do you get heads? These trucks don't last in junkyards very long. People crush stuff. You can buy reconditioned heads, and then you got to pay for the time certs. But these heads, even reconditioned, are very expensive. So, what do you do? Um, my wife looking online and she's pissed like she doesn't like hokey shit so in her mind time certs are a band-aid and she she might be right she's probably right um and they're shit so she found trick flows twisted wedge heads and so she got a pretty good deal and got the whole Magilla, so like chains, cams, the whole kit, twisted wedge kit, um, rad. So that's what we're going to be doing now. The short block is all assembled. Now we had to put new pistons in it.
you imagine why we had to new, put new pistons in it? Well, stubby fingers, fat fuck McGee. When you put the helicoil in, these are a zero, zero clearance engines, so the pistons come pretty darn close to the spark plugs. The helicoil changed the depth of the whole thing, and one of the pistons kissed the spark plug. So the pistons are screwed. I mean, you could change one, but like, whatever. So we put new Speed Pro ones in. So that's all together. Ring, hone, new bearings, uh, melling oil pump. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's rebuilt, done, fixed. Um, even managed to get most of the, the, the scratches out of the cylinder walls that came from pop, 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 popping around with an open um, spark plug hole, probably. So, anyway, it's cleaned up, it's okay, um, ready to uncover and put back together. Um, yeah, so careful where you take your stuff, kids, because people are assholes and don't give a shit. But, frame rails are fixed. And we learned about the Dorman kit. We know about the Dorman kit. Um, if it was me, I'd go Dorman all day long because, hey, you can't see that way. Um, the Redneckian way of doing it, the Neanderthal way that I did, it works. It comes out. It comes out nice. But it's not, it's definitely not conducive to a good time. Like, you're putting some serious labor into it, so. Um, this is one-eighth material. So this is super strong now. Uh, fixed, done. And that's kind of the story. So once I get the once I get the engine unwrapped here, we're gonna do another one with the with the heads going on and everything that you need to know because yeah, overhead cams, awesome. Anyway. Keep it simple, keep it Neanderthal and watch out for fat fucks saying they know about mod motors. <laughs>